So I'm Dr. Ben Solomon. I'm the chief of the Division of Medical Genomics at the Innova Translational Medicine Institute, which is part of the Innova Health System. And I'm here to talk about my commentary piece, which is entitled Obstacles and Opportunities for the Future of Genomic Medicine. I want to talk about two of the things I discussed in my piece. And these are two of the obstacles I think that we and many others throughout the world uh, need to concentrate, concentrate on and are starting to, to work on. The first of those, those obstacles has to do with the amount of genomic knowledge that we have. In other words, how well we're able to interpret someone's genomic material. And there's a big gap there in terms of us being, needing to understand better what all the individual variants mean by themselves, as well as in combination with other genetic variants, with other biological factors, with other non-biological factors. And I think there's two ways that we can attack this problem. One way is that we need to achieve a critical mass of information, and this information has to combine genomic material, it has to combine RNA, epigenetic, protein level material, and clinical information all into one unified whole. The other thing is that in addition to being really excited about generating lots of information, we need to continue to do the very basic lab-based work to help us understand what these genetic changes mean, again, both alone and in combination. And I think that's something that uh, is evident to many people, but sometimes gets lost in the, in the excitement about what's possible uh, with the new genomic technologies. And I think by marrying those together, then we're going to be able to understand how to interpret all this genomic information, and most importantly, how to put that into the context of an individual patient who gets sequenced, whether they have a medical condition or whether that sequencing is done as just as part of ongoing health care. The second major obstacle or the second major hurdle that I think we need to surmount and work on has to do with how do we integrate all this information into an active healthcare system. And I think right now we're getting so much better at being able to generate this information. It would be relatively easy to overwhelm the medical system, including the patients, uh, the individual practitioners, and all the folks that help support uh, the clinical workload. It would be, we could easily do something that's not necessarily beneficial by simply giving them all this information in a kind of an undigested format. And I think what our institute works very hard to do is figure out novel ways, often married with technology, to give this information back in a way that'll be helpful. And I think it's important to admit that not all the answers for health are in the genome. You know, not everything's gonna be DNA-based, but I think we can use genomic material as a scaffold upon which to build a lot of information. And using these new technologies, we can deliver genomic information coupled with all this other biological information and clinical information in a way that will be helpful to the system. And I think there are a number of ways that we can, that we can do this. One way is that our research institute has developed ways to seamlessly integrate patients and the practitioners into genomic medicine. So our research institute, for example, um, plays a key role in getting participants into genomic studies in terms of getting samples, in terms of getting data, in terms of providing follow-up. Uh, and then we analyze the data, of course, and we're trying, we're working very hard to put this data back into the system again in a seamless way so that we're not just dumping an enormous amount of information on the system, but that we're enabling this information to be available in specific circumstances. And there are many circumstances where this could be helpful. These include pharmacogenetic implications. These include research into why a per person might have a certain phenotype. This also includes uh, indications, for example, for surveillance and for prophylactic measures to help avoid disease, to practice uh, preventive primary medicine. So lastly, and perhaps most importantly, I want to talk about what we're doing at the Innova Translational Medicine Institute to try to address some of these very important uh, issues and obstacles. We have a number of studies that are TRIO-based whole genome sequencing studies that really focused on maternal and child health. And I want to talk about one which is one of, I think, the most exciting studies, which we call the longitudinal study. In this longitudinal study, we ascertain families during pregnancy, usually when they get to about the second trimester, and we enroll them through about six obstetric practices that deliver in our main study hospital. And we conduct trio-based whole genome sequencing, and we also collect other DNA, RNA, epigenetic and protein-based studies, along with many other biological data points, as well as comprehensive clinical data through our electronic healthcare record system, which we supplement with study-specific surveys. And we follow these families, uh, hopefully 
throughout life, um, at least through early adulthood, to try to answer two questions. One is, how can, through, through making this really vast genotype phenotype resource, how can we better understand uh, the implications of individual genetic variants, both alone and again in combination with other data points, as well as, again, how do we address the question of the best ways to integrate genomics into healthcare in a way that's going to benefit patients, in a way that's going to benefit the healthcare system, and a way that overall is going to be beneficial to folks. Uh, I think there are a lot of questions to be, to be addressed here. I'm really excited about the potential. At this point, we have about 1,200 families who have been enrolled. Our target goal is about 5,000 families, and we hope that perhaps through collaborations we can build past that into a, what we like to think of as a genomic Framingham Heart Study. Thanks very much.